This video covers ADA configuration for EGX 400 600 series engravers. This chapter covers Engrave Lab software configuration for Braille, output of Braille dots using the Braille dot cutter, output of pictogram and raised text using a character cutter, and placement of the rasters using the auto raster inserter. Now that our machine is configured, we're going to install the braille dot cutter and we'll loosen the Z screw to float the carriage. When putting the cutter in you want to make sure that it is in nice and snug so that way it does not work itself loose. The Z screw will go ahead and loosen that. You want to loosen it all the way up till it stops. This allows the carriage to float, as you can see here. If you feel the bottom of the nose cone, you should barely feel the braille dot cutter. Now using the control panel, we want to press the menu key until we get to the I.O. Others menu. Select Others, press Enter, ensure that Revolution is turned on, press the menu key until you get to Auto Z Control, select On, and press Enter. Then press the menu key until you get back to the default menu. For the spindle speed, we want to go ahead and dial it down to 18,000 RPM. And now we're ready to engrave. To set up our braille job for our EGX series engraver, we're going to use Engrave Lab. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and Launch Engrave Lab. When you launch Engrave Lab, you're going to specify your plate size. For this project, uh, we're using an 8x8. We'll go ahead and select 8x8. Thickness of the material is 0 .064. And we'll go ahead and click OK. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to bring in our artwork. Uh, for the sign uh, in Engrave Lab, uh, Engrave Lab under the layout, if you go to the clip art viewer, Engrave Lab does come uh, with a complete library of ADA ready art. Um, I've already got the, a file set up, so we'll go ahead and import it. Once we import our file, we'll go ahead and place it. You want to refer to your ADA manual for your spacing uh, of the margin between the edge of the sign to the pictogram, pictogram to the text, and text to the braille, and braille to the edge of the plate. Once you have the sign uh, situated, We'll go ahead and select our text tool, select our text compose, we'll just click and drag and we're going to go ahead and type in uh, the word stairs in lowercase and then on our braille translator which is located up here in our toolbar, if we click on the down arrow key the braille font we want to select is BR Punch CA. If it's not listed, you can click browse and that'll bring up the font detective and you can scroll through your fonts to select that one. The BR Punch CA does come with the Engrave Lab package. If you notice the height will automatically be set 
The translation is grade two and it's in English. We'll simply click OK. And now to convert our text, we have the, the text selected and simply click on the Braille button. This will convert it to grade two compliant Braille. We'll go ahead and reposition it like so and we're done. This is how quick it is to create your sign. For the stare, for the pictogram, and for the text, we need to apply a male toolpath. To do that, we'll select the toolpath tools. We'll select the male toolpath. From the tool list, we want to go down and select our 0.010 30 degree 1164 ADA profile cutter. For the depth, we are going to set the depth to 0 0.033. If you click on the button to the right, this will bring up our parameters. For passes, you want to go ahead and type in 1. And if you press the tab key, all of the values should change to 0 0.033. We'll then click OK. And cl click OK to apply the toolpath. If you notice, there's a dark line around the graphic. For the Braille, we do not have to apply a toolpath. So at this point, our sign is ready to output. To output our Braille, we can select our Braille. We'll then click Engrave and Engraving Defaults. Now this will bring out the output window. Now prior to actually outputting the job, we want to create a custom driver. So on our drop down list, we have our selected driver. In this example, we're using the EGX 600. We'll click on setup. We'll go and select the EGX 600. And what we want to do is we want to make a custom copy of the driver. So we'll go ahead and click Create Custom Copy. And for this driver, I'm going to call it Braille Drill and click OK. Go ahead and click Apply and OK. From our drop down list, you'll notice now we have a Braille drill driver. If I go back to my setup, I'm going to make a copy of that 600 driver again. This time, I'm going to create a copy for my character cutter. And then again, I'll make another copy for the auto raster inserter and click OK. So now I've got three copies of the driver. The reason you want to do this is when you switch between one and the other all the parameters for your feeds and speeds are already preset and this increases your throughput. So we'll select the Braille drill and click OK. For the tool, we want to select Braille. We want to uncheck sort and uncheck output toolpaths. Under the engrave option, we want sign plate and we want to check the selected box. You want to go ahead and click apply. Then we can go to our tool options. Now in the tool options, our plunge velocity will leave at the default of 0.3937. For the clamp height, we can leave it at the point 0.3 because we're running the machine in auto Z control uh, anyway. The braille depth is already pre-programmed. For the cut velocity, we can increase that to the max speed. So if you set it to 3.9 inches and press the up arrow key, it'll set it to the max value. For the EGX 350, uh, this value would be 2.5. 
We'll go ahead and click OK. Click Apply. And now we've just created our parameters for the Braille drill. While we're here, we're going to go ahead and set our parameters for the character cutter. For the character cutter, we're doing an Auto Z enabled. We'll uncheck Sort. We'll uncheck Output Tool Paths and then recheck it. Now when you recheck it, you want to make sure Output Tool Paths is selected and you want to ensure that the Also Cut Contour Paths is unchecked. Again, under Engrave, we're doing Sign Plate Selected. Click Apply to apply these parameters and then click our tool options. Under the tool options for the cut velocity, for the EGX 600, should be able to run at about one and a half inches per second. Uh, I would recommend anywhere between one and one and a half inches. For the plunge velocity, we can set this to the maximum value of 1.9685 inches. Click OK click apply and click close. We'll go back to the engraving defaults and now we're going to set up our auto raster inserter. Now the auto raster inserter works on the same principle as the braille drill. So for the tool we're going to select braille again sort and output tool paths is unchecked. Sign plate Select it as checked. Click Apply. The difference here is the Y offset. So for the Y offset, we're going to input our value that we measured when we set up the machine. In Chapter 2, click Apply. Click Tool Options. For the cut velocity, we can set this to the maximum speed of the engraver. The plunge velocity we can also set to the maximum speed of the engraver. The other values we can leave as defaults. Click OK, click Apply, and click Close. So at this point we're ready to output our job. To output our Braille We'll sweep select the Braille, click Engrave, Engraving Defaults. For the selected driver, we want to select the Braille Drill, Close, click on Engrave, Output, and then click on Engrave to output our job. Next, we'll install the tactile material, which has a 3M permanent adhesive on it. We'll go ahead and peel the protective sheet from the front side. And we'll also peel the backer to expose the adhesive. Now when applying the tactile material to the substrate, we want to go ahead and place it over the area where our pictogram and our raised text is going to be located just above the braille drill points. You want to have it overlapping your substrate just by a little bit. What this does is it makes it easier to peel off once you've routed out your pictogram and your raised text. At this point, we'll go ahead and grab the controller, press the menu key until we see the home view menu. Want to make sure home is selected and press the enter key. 
This will move the machine back to the home position. Press the menu key back to our default menu. At this point, we'll go ahead and remove the Braille drill. And we're going to replace it with our character cutter. We'll go ahead and top load the character cutter. Want to make sure it's nice and snug. And now we're ready to output To output our raised text and our pictogram, we'll go ahead and sweep select both the raised text and the pictogram. Click on engrave. Engraving defaults. On the drop down for the driver, we're going to select character cutter. Click close. Click engrave. Click output. And click engrave to output our job. Once we're done cutting, we can go ahead and use the supplied brush and clean off your engraving debris. Clean in between the characters to get it nice and clean so we can prepare it for weeding. Once complete, we'll get the control panel. Press the menu key to get to the home view menu. Select home and hit enter. This will bring the carriage back to the home position. Once at the home position, we'll press the menu key to the IO others menu. Select others and hit enter. For revolution, we'll turn it off. Press the menu key until we get to auto Z control and we'll turn it off and press enter. Press the menu key to get back to the default menu. At this point, we'll go ahead and remove the character cutter from the spindle. And then we'll lower our auto raster inserter. When you lower the auto raster inserter, make sure you lock it in place. We'll grab the control panel. We'll press the menu key until we get to the home view menu. We'll select view and select enter. This will move the carriage out of the way. At this point, we can peel the excess tactile from the substrate. You could also peel out uh, any center characters as well if you need to. Using the brush, we can also clean up any excess. Once we're done, we'll go ahead and move the carriage back to the home position by pressing home and hit enter. You also want to ensure that the raster pen is full of rasters. 
And now we're ready to output. To output the file for our auto raster inserter, we simply sweep select the braille, click on engrave, engraving defaults, select the auto raster inserter, click close, click engrave, output, and click on the engrave icon to output our job. This concludes our tutorial. For more support tutorials and information on webinars, please visit www.rolanddga.com forward slash academy.